right, with these midterm elections imminent, we've seen the desperation from President Biden and the Democrats. I mean, their plan is to push taxpayer-funded abortion up until the moment of birth. That's what the president said yesterday. That's his number one priority if they retain Congress. That should tell you something. They want to bribe voters with free stuff paid for by you, the taxpayer. And they want to gaslight you with claims the economy is, ah, oh, it's not as bad as you think. Could be worse. You know, House Republicans have offered an alternative with their commitment to America. And on the Senate side, Republican Senator Rick Scott, who's the chairman of the Republican, study, uh, the Republican Senate Committee, has offered a 12-point plan of his own with an emphasis on education, the economy, protecting religious freedom, and strengthening the family. Well, what else should you know about this plan? Well, this is what President Biden thinks. Senator Rick Scott of Florida, United States Senator, who's leading the Republican National Senatorial Campaign Committee, released what he calls the ultra-MAGA agenda. It's a MAGA agenda, all right. Let me tell you about this ultra-MAGA agenda. It's extreme, as most MAGA things are. Well, that tells me all I need to know. It must be good. Protecting the family, the sanctity of life, religious freedom. Yes, that's extreme to the left. Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Senator Rick Scott of Florida. He serves on the Senate Home Homeland Security Committee, the Senate Armed Services Committee, the Senate Budget Committee, Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, and he formerly served as governor of the state of Florida. Senator Scott, welcome to Washington Watch. You know, that's that was a great clip, but, you know, he, there's another clip where he said I was from Wisconsin. <laughs> I, 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 I saw that one. I, I said somebody needs to, uh, to help him out, uh, but I don't think we can. Um, before we discuss uh, the plan, we just received an update from Samaritan's Purse on the progress in Florida. And I know you've been very involved in that because you, you had a history of dealing with those hurricanes when you were governor. Uh, what's the latest you've been seeing? Well, first off, I want to thank Samaritan's Purse. You know, I had four hurricanes when I was governor, and they showed up. Uh, they showed up, and they helped people. Um, and um, I mean, it's, it's just—it's such—it's so rewarding when you see people that just show up from all over the country and help other people. And that's what—that's what Samaritan Purse does. So I, I want to thank everybody at Samaritan Purse for what they're doing. The—it's um, tough. Um, when I was governor, we had four hurricanes, and the, the most important thing was keep everybody alive. And unfortunately, in this hurricane, we've lost over 100 people. And you know, I always said to everybody um, that you can, you know, you can rebuild your house, you just can't be rebuild your life. So my heart goes out to every one of those individuals that lost their lives and their families. Um, and I will do everything I can to be helpful to them. There's a lot of people that lost their businesses, they lost their homes, uh, they've got a lot of damage in their homes. It's It was a devastating storm. Um, and it's hurt a lot of people. But the nice thing about Florida is that we're we work together. We, uh, you know, work with other people. So I'm just trying to make sure our federal government does their part. FEMA, the SBA, the University Department of Agriculture, all have a role uh, in this, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure the federal government does its job to make to make sure we get our state back to work as quickly as as possible. Well, Senator, I want to use this as a jumping off point <laughs> into the 12 point plan because uh, number 10. Uh, in your plan is this. It says Americans will be free to welcome God into all aspects of our lives, and we will stop all government efforts to deny our religious freedom and our freedom of speech. And I, I don't want to start there because as you were just pointing to the great work that Samaritan's Purse does, um, I've worked with them many times in Louisiana, and the, they are motivated by their faith. And, and people mm -hmm. of faith are, are, are motivated to do things that government never can do. And certainly when it tries, it doesn't do it effectively. But when we are attacking religious freedom and the ability of people to live by their faith, we're, we're taking that element of community out of our society. You know, on top of Samaritan Purse, there's, there's churches that have shown up from all over the country. Uh, and there's churches down here that have had, you know, some of their members have lost their homes. I visited some churches, I visited, visited some synagogues uh, in the last two weeks that are doing an unbelievable job. And there's, and, you know, there's, there's all sorts of groups that have come down here. And you know what they give? They not only give you food, they give you water, they'll give you maybe a tent if you're out of a house, things like that. But they give you hope. Yeah. Uh, the biggest thing they can do is, is show that there is a path forward. And I think, I, and I hope what it does is bring people back 
uh, to Christ. Uh, and, you know, it gives, it gives people an opportunity to talk about their faith and why they do this. Uh, but I'm, I am so fed up with government that tries to get, you know, God out of our whole life. They don't want God involved. They don't believe in God, unfortunately, so many people. Uh, and they want it out of everything. They want it out of our schools. They want it out of our businesses. They want it out of anything to do with our society. And think about it. The family and God built this country. That's what, that's what built this country. I mean, we're, we're here by the grace of God. And our family structure is the best organization structure in, yeah. in the world. There's nothing better. And you, you, you take on, in this 12-point plan, which is quite impressive, because one of the first things you take on is the issue of, of education, that parents should have the right. And this is a hot-button issue right now, and we see this, uh, I, this uh, indoctrination that's taking place in our public school classrooms. You say that parents, not governments, will choose the best schools for their children. It's your kid. Right? It's pretty simple. This is your child. You brought this child into the world. You are the one that has the opportunity to educate this child. You should be able, with your own tax dollars, these are your tax dollars, they're not government dollars. You paid these taxes. You should be able to say, I want my child to go to this school. They could go to a Catholic school. They could go to Episcopal school. They could go to a non-denominational school, a charter school, whatever. But you should have that right, not the government. They don't. They should be able to tell you where you're where your child's going to go. And guess what? When you get involved in your child's education, your child does better in school. We know that. As parents, more parental involvement. That's why a lot of these charter schools, a lot of these parochial schools, I mean, they mandate the parents are involved because they know the child will do better. This is an issue that crosses partisan lines. This is, this is a parental issue. I don't care what your party affiliation is, most parents want their children to succeed, and they understand that education is a key part of that. You know, you know uh, we, we do a lot of polls at this chair of the National Republican Central Committee. Here's what people are going to be shocked about. I've won the Hispanic vote uh, in, in all my races as governor in, in the Senate. We're going to win Hispanic votes around the country. Hispanics are fed up. They're fed up with the public school system. They know that the public school system is, is failing their child. They came here to live the dream. They came here to live the dream of this country. They know that the dream of this country starts with a good education. So they, they I think people are, I think a lot of people are going to be shocked at how many Hispanics vote Republicans because they know that they, the Republicans are going to make sure they get a better opportunity for their child's education. It's an unbelievable issue for parents. I don't want to get too far off of the 12-point plan, but when everyone was running saying the Republicans didn't have a chance to take back the Senate, you said, no, we're going to get at least 52 seats. Do you still see it that way? Oh, I think we're going to get 52 plus. Um, you, you can see there's no energy for the Biden agenda. There's none. I mean, look at the early voting that's headed in our direction. Uh, so there's no energy for the Biden agenda. And these Democrats are trying to run as Republicans. Uh, that are in, that have been in office and voted off for all these horrible things, voted for abortion up until the moment of birth. I mean, who who doesn't want children to be brought into this world? We all do. We love kids. I mean, we so the Democrats have voted to bring to abortion up until the moment of birth, and then a baby born alive. They think you can just put them in the closet and let them die. I mean, this is a these are human beings thinking this way and voting this way. But they all are running away from that. When Joe Biden talks about his abortion plan, he doesn't say, oh, yeah, I want it up until the moment of birth and you don't have to keep a baby alive. And every American, you're going to start paying for everybody else's abortion. Well, so th there, this, are, it's disgusting. there are some Democrats that still are are fixated on this issue and are communicating in such a way that it's astounding. I want to play this clip. This is of uh, Stacey Abrams today. Uh, this was this morning on MSNBC. Play clip number 12. What could you do as governor to alleviate the concerns of Georgia voters about those livability, daily, hourly issues that they're confronted with? But let's be clear. Having children is why you're worried about your price for gas. It's why you're concerned about how much food costs. I mean, admitting we just need to abort, abort children, then gas won't be a problem. You know, in my, uh, in my debate, in my race for governor in 2010, they went, they asked my opponent me, do we have any regrets? My opponent said she had no regrets. And I said, if I if I had not known I was I was that I would be able to afford more kids, I'd have had more kids. I love kids. Who doesn't want who doesn't want to bring great babies in this world 
and have an opportunity to help raise them. I mean, we all do. I love my children, my grandchildren. Yeah, I just, I don't get this, this idea that the people, pe- I don't know people that, that, that want to get rid of children. I mean, think of how many people want to adopt right now. Right. I mean, it, it's just, it's disgusting. These Democrats act like we don't want children. I love children. We all do. Yeah, we, we, we should. I have five. I wish I had more. I, if I'd have started earlier, I would. All right, back to the plan, 12-point plan. Number two, is, is it basically attacking what I think is at the core of the Democratic Party, the left, the Marxist agenda, this uh, identity politics? I mean, Tony, why, would, why should government ever ask anybody about their skin color or their race? They shouldn't. We're supposed to be judged by the, our character, how hard we work, things like that. Why don't we judge everybody by those types of things rather than their skin color? And by the way, people don't vote because, oh, they say, oh, I have a different skin color, so I vote. I have to vote different than you. The Democrats want you to believe that, but that's not really true. I remember I was at a, I, my wife and I went to a new Mexican restaurant in uh, Naples, Florida, where I live uh, last week. And my waiter was originally from Mexico. He's a U.S. citizen. He says, I can't wait for Republicans to get back in office because I'll, I'll make more money. That's what was important to him. He, he, doesn't want to, he doesn't want to have problems financially. And guess what? He's excited. He's looking forward to being married and having kids. We, we, we talked about what was important to him. And it's the same thing that's important to you. You want to be able to survive financially. You want your kids to get a good education. And you want to live in a safe community. That's, that's what right. people care about. You, you, want to be able, you want to be able to gas up your car without being yeah. hijacked. And, and that's actually number three in the plan is this, this coddling of criminals and the defunding of police has to, has to stop. I mean, who doesn't want the police to show up if somebody's trying to harm them? I'm, I'm very appreciative of law enforcement. We, when I left as governor, we were at 47 year low in our crime rate. I still talk to sheriffs and police chiefs all the time uh, because I know they care. They're, they're, they care about what's going on in their communities. And so this idea that the police are the bad guys and criminals are the good guys, I mean, the Democrats are crazy. I mean, look at what's happened with crime in this country because the Democrats' position that, oh, you know, remember how they were burning the buildings in Portland? That was a mostly peaceful protest. No, they were hurting people. Hurting, they were destroying property. That's wrong. And that's what we teach our kids. Why would the Democrats be teaching their children something different? The police are the good guys, criminals are the bad guys. And if you don't want to prosecute, if you're a state attorney, you don't want to prosecute the criminals, you should get fired. You shouldn't be doing that. Well, and that's why I think the voters ought to be firing this administration because they are not. Uh, they're not going after the criminals. Those people who were, were torturing, burning cities, and then what we've seen since May, where we've had over 100 pro-life pregnancy centers and churches that have been vandalized, we've not seen the first arrest from the Biden administration Department of Justice. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, you don't raise your kids. Who re- I don't know people that raise their kids to say, oh, you know, you, you, you want to live in a bad neighborhood where there's a lot of crime. You don't build businesses there. You don't want to live there. I want to live in safe places. I want my grandkids to live in safe places. We all do. And so we need to respect our law enforcement. It's a tough job. They show up even when somebody's not nice to them. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm, we need to fund them. We need to fund them properly. We need to respect them. Uh, we need to support them. We need to do everything we can to make sure we have great law enforcement around the country. All right, Senator, we're going to run out of time. and There's a lot more uh, economic growth, free, fair elections, immigration, cutting taxes, growing the economy, um, all good stuff. And, and folks, you can you can read this. Go to TonyPerkins.com and you can follow the links over. But, Senator, I got to ask you this question. How do we see this become policy? Well, what you have to do is we have to get a majority in the House and the Senate. Uh, and then we've got to go. We got to vote on these things. We've got to, you know, what you have to do is you need to make sure you are calling your House member and your senator and say the parts of the plan, whether it doesn't bother me if somebody likes all of them, but the parts you like, you should say, I want that to become law. I'm, I'm, you know, are you going to do it when they run for office? Say, hey, are you going to do that? I want to know I'm hiring you to represent me. And then and then once they, they they tell you, once they get in, say, okay, what are you doing? Are you getting it done? It's no. Tony, here's the way I think about it. We should be hiring, electing people that we would hire. When you hire people, you say, what are you going to do? All right. And if you're not going to do it, you shouldn't be there. It's real simple. 
Well, Senator, we're out of time, but would love to continue the conversation. I think it's a great plan, and I'd like to talk more about how we make it reality, because I think it's exactly what America needs and what our folks want. So thanks for it's joining us. Happen. Thanks, Tony.